Analogies can sound persuasive, but they're not always logical. Welcome to Critical Thinking Scan, where we look at how you can think about any faith-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today let's look at an example of a persuasive type of flawed logic called arguments by faulty analogies, which are something to watch out for in step number seven of the seven checks of critical thinking, check the logic. Now, analogies make memorable comparisons between two things, and they're super useful for explaining complicated or abstract concepts. I mean, Jesus used analogies all the time, comparing the kingdom of heaven to everything from a pearl merchant to a mustard seed to yeast. And because of their ability to illustrate and explain, analogies often make arguments more persuasive. But as powerful as analogies can be, remember, they can only illustrate. Analogies can never prove anything. And if an analogy is being leveraged to argue against a biblical teaching, you know that argument will fall apart somewhere because God's word is true. So if you encounter an analogy that seems to attack a biblical worldview, you know it's going to have some weakness. Sometimes, once you identify that weakness, you can even turn the analogy around to enforce a biblical perspective. There are two steps to this. First, identify the analogy's weakness by finding an important difference between the two things being compared. Remember, an argument by analogy is only as strong as the analogy itself. So if you show that the analogy is faulty, you've shown the argument is faulty. Second, you can look for ways to reinterpret the analogy to promote a biblical worldview. And a great way to do this is to bring the argument back to an underlying big picture concept like what truth is or where truth comes from. Let's go through an example of how this works. Have you ever heard the famous analogy that different religions are like three blind men feeling an elephant? The first guy felt the elephant's trunk and said, oh, an elephant is a thin, flexible cylinder. The second guy felt the elephant's foot and was like, no way, an elephant is a heavy, thick cylinder. The third guy felt the elephant's ear and he was like, no, 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 you guys are both wrong. An elephant is this like floppy, membranous disc. And the analogy goes that just like the three blind men were really feeling the same elephant, different religions might seem to disagree, but they're really describing the same God. That claim might sound pretty persuasive, but is it true? Well, let's think about it. First, let's look for an important difference between the things being compared here. Different parts of the elephant are being compared to different religions, which are ultimately made up of belief statements. And the comparison is that just like we can describe different body parts when talking about the same elephant, people can use different religious statements to describe the same realities about God and the universe he has created. But, like you can learn about in the linked resources, those religious statements disagree. Now, we know that different body parts can coexist on the same elephant, but can different and extremely contradictory religious statements about the nature of God and the universe and human souls really coexist as truth within the same reality? Not if reality is logical. The fact that different body parts can coexist on one elephant, we know that. But contradictory statements cannot logically coexist in one reality. And that's a major difference between the things being compared. Now that we've found that weakness, let's turn the analogy around to enforce a biblical perspective. To do that, we can use a big picture question behind this analogy, which is, how do we know the truth? Specifically, how would anyone talking about the three blind men know they were feeling the same elephant? That person would have to have open eyes. So is anyone who claims that all these religions are equal the only person who can see the grand scheme of reality and observe the huge big picture of truth that all other humans are just groping to discover? Such a person would be God. And interestingly, God has revealed the big picture of reality to us through his word. That's an example of how by bringing an argument back to a big picture concept, you can point people to God. For more on how to think critically about any message that challenges the Bible's teaching, you can access my other CT scan videos packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you for watching. Hey, 
Hey, it's Patricia. Just wanted to let you know that if you like these videos, a free, easy way to help Answers in Genesis Canada produce more content and equip more people to defend their faith is to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and of course, share these resources. I know you might hear that kind of thing a lot, but the reason these actions are so important is they inform social media algorithms to help these videos reach more people who can benefit from them. And that's especially helpful because advertising is super expensive. But this way, even media platforms which are often unfriendly towards biblical content become tools to promote gospel outreach for free. And if you're on board to share this message of biblical authority and want to give, you can also make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking the link below. Thank you so much.